Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest edition of the Education Show. My name is David Mills, and the theme for this week's show is home education. You may recall in September I had two delightful teenage siblings on the show, Cameron and Mackenzie. Well, this week, having heard their perspective, we've got their mum on the show, Sonia Bloomer, who's going to share her parent perspective on home education and tell us a bit about their journey from her perspective. Say hello, Sonia. Hello. <laughs> and Sonia, my first question to you um, is, why did you choose to home educate your two children? Well, um, I had very much enjoyed being at home with them when they were when they were in their younger years and then all of a sudden school seemed to be kind of suddenly going to be happening and it just suddenly felt like we were having such a good time and we were um so happy and doing so many lovely things it just kind of felt like well why does this have to stop and um I'd been a an au pair in America for a couple of years and the little boy I nannied didn't go to school till he was six or seven and so at Cameron's age of three um, going on four when he was going to be starting school um, I had been nannying for Ben for another three years and I'd remembered all the wonderful things we'd done and all the adventures we'd had together and it just very felt very sad that I wasn't going to have that with Cam and but I at the time didn't know there was another option and my friend actually lent me a book um, and I didn't know at the time but it was on home education and as soon as I opened it up it was just I knew in that moment that this was for us and this was something I wanted to do so um, my husband agreed to give it a go for a few months and see how we got on and um, yeah we're now 13 years later so we got on quite well great stuff so, Sonia, you made the choice to go yes. down the home ed route. So, what approach did you take? Because I've spoken to a lot of home education families over the year, and, and parents tend to take different approaches. Some people like to try and almost recreate a formal school classroom atmosphere in their home. Other parents take a far more freedom-based or to, what's sometimes called autonomous learning or self-directed learning approach. How did you go about implementing home education for your children in your home? Well, to start with, it was definitely very play-based because they were four and two at the time and we just continued with play. I think having been an au pair to children who didn't go to school till much later, I, I knew that that was a wonderful thing for them just to be able to play. We did a lot of arts and crafts. Um, we socialized with a lot of other home ed families and um, that probably continued, I would say probably for the first 10 years or up until Cameron was 10 and Mackenzie was eight. Okay. Um, and during that time, during that time, like I said, we did a we did a lot of yeah, a lot of arts and crafts, lots of outside play, lots of we'd go on nature walks, we'd do things with the Parks Trust, we'd um, do lots of um, physical play, lots of things like that. And then when they got to about eight and ten, um, I'd become friends with a lot of people who were doing different kinds of um, um, approaches and I learned about things like Charlotte Mason and I learned about things like the Montessori approach and we kind of just did a bit of everything it was like we would take things that just seemed to work for the children and give it a go so um, I would say probably when Cam was about 10 we started to kind of I guess um, look at a few curriculums and things but it, it really wasn't more than say an hour a day um, if yeah. that um, but yeah, we just really tried a bit of everything, but I don't think we ever did school at home ever. It was always home education where we kind of did our educating outside of the home with different people, sometimes here, but it was a lot of everything. Great. Thank you for that. How did your kids pick up, obviously, the, the, the two subjects that people whenever I try and talk about home education or alternative routes, alternatives to school, the immediate concern is all oh, but how do you ensure they, they keep up with their school peers in terms of numeracy and arithmetic? So how's that worked out 
for your two and, and have they felt for example under pressure in terms of comparing them to their progress compared to their peers who are attending school well in their early years i tended to not look at the national curriculum at all never in fact i don't think i've ever actually looked at it um maybe the last year because we were doing gcse's with cam but other than that so i never kind of felt any pressure on me to to keep up or compare because actually i didn't really know what they were doing in school so that that kind of helped um but as far as reading and writing um, and um, arithmetic, um, we basically, our, our three R's when they were younger um, were um, respect, resourcefulness and responsibility. And we always talked about those as our three R's. And we kind of never put any pressure on the reading and the um, arithmetic side of things. Um, they just seem to happen naturally. Um, like Cameron at about five um he was he may have still been four but he was between four and five he very much um was into comic making and he really wanted to start his characters because he was always into drawing but then he wanted his characters to speak and he realized that for them to be able to speak and him to be able to show someone what they said he needed to learn how to put the words together so that other people could actually read this so he would sit there and he would call out to me um you know, um, mom, how do you spell? Or, or and um, I, I don't know. I might be doing something just um, laundry or washing up, or all the things that need to be doing in the house anyway. And um, yeah. I would say the word to him, how it was spelled, and he would write it down. Or what does an a, an O and a U make? What sound? And so he very quickly pieced it together because he wanted to do it. It meant something. And then of course he would take these comics around and show friends and family, and they would. Um, be very excited to read them and see them and so he would get that kind of encouragement and so I never really remember him kind of in a way learning it just sort of happened um, and as far as Mackenzie was concerned I kind of um, I guess with her being my second him being my first and learning so quickly in a way took a little bit of a pressure off from other people thinking well is he learning because he did it so quickly it was a bit like well um in fact i remember him dropping a comic on a friend's floor one day and she picked it up and she had a little boy the same age and she said did camera write all this and i said yeah and she said oh, oh my gosh, um, I, I don't know how I would ever get, you know, my son to sit down and write that much. And of course, Cameron was just spilling this out, you know, daily. And he'd stay for his comic together. So anyway, as far as family and friends and everybody, you know, they could see all this happening. So nobody kind of was questioning, you know, um, how, how this was happening. Um, and Mackenzie um, was very different. She just never really, she showed, um, she always loved books. She would sit with her baby dolls and she would have them all around her and she would have her pile of books and she would read them and using the pictures she would tell them the stories and she loved the feel of them she loved being read to but she had no interest in actually understanding what the letters were so we kind of went down the peter and jane route because i kind of suddenly felt like oh i should teach her and um mm. she very quickly just turned to me and said mom because me and her were reading things like the little house on the prairie books and um yeah. She was learning all these wonderful stories um, about the early settlers in America and Laura Ingalls, who became her best friend. And she just, you know, she loved all those stories. And then there she is reading about, you know, the, the dog and the ball. And she and she just looked at me and she says, Mom, I don't want to know how this hate story ends. It's so boring. And and I just thought, yes, I, I, I understand. So the Peter and Jane books went away and I just had to have faith because I'd met so many home educating families um, whose children didn't learn to read till they were kind of around the nine to 11 mark. But yeah. then by 13, they were sort of taking their English GCSEs. You know, they were they, they would pick it up and then run with it. So I have faith that this child, you know, this smart little girl had, you know, was going to do it, but I just had to let her be. So when she was about, um, I, I think it was about nine, she was in a... Um, she was in a Bible study class and she really, really wanted to take her turn in reading scripture. So she would come home and she would say to me, right, we're going to read this. And she would really, really go over all the words and learn them so that she could read them. And that was how she did it. It was almost like she had a need to do it and she did it. So we didn't do Peter and Jane. We actually did the Bible. That was how she decided that's how she was going to do it. And, um, 
she was off and running then you know it didn't look back kind of thing but the thing that struck me was the most she didn't sit there as a nine or ten year old and say oh I'm so I feel really embarrassed that I can't read it she would sit there with her peers in a circle and she would actually be confident enough to to read you know read through even though some of the words she would struggle on because actually she was just so confident in herself that it didn't even occur to her that anybody else would be thinking anything of her because nobody had ever told her that she should be or she had to be or there was something wrong with her or something so she just had the confidence to do it in her own time and she did it and interestingly they both took their latin gcse's last year and mackenzie was 13 and she got an a star so wow. from you know from being nine or ten three years later she got an a star at latin, in latin so it kind of shows when you're ready um you just run with it great stuff so a few oh. things that i just want to uh pick out there first of all um so essentially, you've allowed their, your children to develop these kinds of so-called, um, what are they called? The basics. That's what they call them, isn't it? The basics. Yeah. Through the, yeah. Pursuit, the natural pursuit of their own interests. Yes. And the second thing, thing that stands out from what you've just said is that both of your children, even though they are your own children, they both had completely separate um, approaches to how oh, they develop those, those, those reading and writing skills. So it yeah. wasn't a case of one size fits all. You allowed them to just learn in whatever way worked for them as unique individuals. Mm. And in fact, I think probably having Cameron do it first was very helpful to me because obviously, yes, you lo I was loving the experience and everything, but you're, but you're still very aware that I am doing something that's a bit different to everybody else. And um, the fact that Cameron did it first was very helpful to me because it then helped me to have faith in the fact that Kenzie would. Perhaps if it had been the other way around, I might not have been so calm about it. And also I had no yeah. pressure on me not as much pressure from everybody else because obviously they see camera could do it so it really was helpful that it happened that way round. so because yeah. i don't want to come across as if i was always just like oh it's all okay and it's be all right because obviously you're a mum and you kind of feel like you you know you want them to go out into the world and be equipped and and have you know the things they need so um but it it really did help yeah very much related to that that point is my next question i've actually had several parents contact me in the last few weeks one who's recently taken the plunge um, and deregistered her child from school and, and is now a bit like rabbit in the headlights, what do I do now? And uh, another a mum who is in the process of deregistering but she's a bit unsure whether it's the right thing to do. And one of the biggest concerns is parents not feeling they are quote unquote qualified enough yeah. to actually educate their own children. Yeah. But they may not Be feel they, they have enough knowledge themselves to, to impart to their children what's your yeah. response to that um the amount of people that when they know a home educator would go oh so you're a teacher um no, no and um you know would and, that, and then there would be that kind of not sort of i i started with them very young so obviously i mean most people would understand this for the first 10 12 years everything you can kind of like it you know it's it's very easy it's lovely it's just being enthusiastic about everything but after that um it's is there an echo on your end we're okay this it looks like the um the signal isn't quite as strong as it was but i can still hear you okay okay cool because so i yep. can hear my voice coming back at me um but yeah so it was um it, oh, sorry, I was going to say yes. I have been, we've been very fortunate to be part of a wonderful home ed community, and that would be one thing I would say to these mums. If you can get in contact with other home ed mums, then do that. Or I'm, I'm home ed dads, so I've, I've home educated beside dads as well. And um, get in touch with families, and, and that will give you a lot of confidence because they'll be able to share their stories but also the fact we shared a lot of our own passions with each other so when the children were younger one session that my friend and I came up with was span art and she's from Venezuela and so yeah. she we'd get together at her house um, and we'd do Spanish so she would teach children Spanish her boys and and my two and then we, I was a lot more comfortable with arts and crafts. So the following week, they'd come to my house and we'd then do an arts and craft that backed up the Spanish they'd learned. So, for instance, they would learn about the clothes of the body. I'm um, sorry, the part, the, 
clothes sorry the words for clothes and the next week we came to my house and I remember we made this sort of six foot man out of catalogues and we cut all the trousers out of out the catalogues and we with the trousers we made his trousers and as they glued them on they would just be like with the print stick everyone sat on they were using the Spanish word for it and so it was you know and so they went over what they'd learned so we kind of did the Spanish with her the art with me and we did the span art then um, I have with other families a wonderful friend of mine is just English you know, she's so passionate about it and so we would read a book over a month um, to kill a mockingbird for instance and then we would get together once a month at her house and she would set the children um, different act different things to do together like they might put on a drama about it or a TV report or pretend they were interviewing the characters and um, that was wonderful because now when you talk to my children about these books they they're very excited by them and they enjoyed them but it wasn't like we sat down and kind of wrote essays about them and mm. pulled them apart and said now we have to look at each bit and break it down we read it as the author would have intended us to enjoyed it and then we did different things to do with it so um, that was wonderful and again she it was her passion now me and my husband um, have really enjoyed doing a lot of social activities with the children so there were a lot of parents who really um, were very pleased to um, for, for a one or every Monday afternoon for I think about six or seven years um, I ran something called coffee and play where we would get to Together in parks all over the area and I would send out an email the week before and we would meet up in the park and we would get together and the children would play and we would socialize as, as you know together and then as they got older that turned into wide games um, which we've been doing um, we did for the last couple of years I think maybe three years um, where we get together in local um, forests um, and we play wide games with them, things like capture the flag and things like that. And um, one of the bonuses about home education is you have the world to yourself um, during the week. So you go to these places and literally you have it to yourself and you can do all these wonderful things and in a way not have to share with the rest of the world. So I think I've digressed a bit there, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I didn't for a second think that I could do everything. I never have said that. And as the children have got older, what's been wonderful is when we were studying things together, like we've done some gorgeous home ed science curriculums, wonderful. Um, and we've got together as co-ops, say four different families. And I have learned alongside them, which has been wonderful. And um, not only does it mean that, um, you know, we're, 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 they're able to learn, but also they're seeing me learning. They're seeing right. me enthusiastic yes. about it. They're seeing me excited about it. And so they get the feeling that learning is for life and learning is, you know, and sometimes we'll be sitting around the table and the grown up will suddenly go off into something like did you read that and how exciting and and we'll go off for a couple of minutes and the church you know we're very excited and the children will be looking at us like are you guys done now you know um because but they're all laughing and joking because they can see how excited we are that we've just found out you know something about an atom that we have no clue but we're all learning together and all the parents I know that home educate, um, even, even those who, for instance, would perhaps be put into the academic box, they might be academic in English or they might be academic in, in, in their history or something, but they're not necessarily mathematicians. And then you've got other people who are fantastic musicians um, and you kind of come together. But, but even if, if you can't find that, it, there's so much out there now that you can actually learn along with your children, you know, and it's just a case of having the adventure together and, and enjoying it. And, um, you know, it very, you'd certainly do not have to know everything. And I certainly didn't and still don't. And then you get to the next point, which is the fact your children start to overtake you and they actually start teaching you about stuff that they wow. found out about. And um, you think, oh, wow, and that's just wonderful and amazing, you know, and that's the point you realise when they're ready to go off into the world and push, you know, to, to carry on sort of thing. But, but it's wonderful. Wow, you covered a lot of points there. Um, amazing information. Thank you so much for sharing. Very much related to that. You kind of covered it, really, but I do want to make it explicit. One of the big arguments against home education the argument so the argument goes is that children don't have the same socialization opportunities that they would have in school from what you've said it's very very clear that certainly in your children's case that's not true at all mm. would you say that's true of all home education families 
I honestly, from my like where you are in the country and, and, and yeah, um, sort of the level exactly. of interest in home education in your particular yeah the woods. Um, it's really funny because um, I, when they were younger, people would always say, well, what about socialization? It's definitely the first question. And I used to have to laugh because I thought, gosh, if you knew what I was doing with my days, you'd be going, well, what about where's, where's the schooling? Because the socialization is so wonderful within a lot of home ed communities that actually you can actually just spend every day, all day out and about doing things. Um, and what I love most about it is the fact that you'll be socializing um, at, at a lot of things, you know, with, with, because you've got families there, you'll have baby in arms right up to kind of like now when we do wide games, you know, 17, 18 year olds out there. Um, and it, it's this big. And also, of course, they're with the adults as well. So they're also socializing with the other parents. So it, it really is real socialization. There isn't any. Um, it always confused my children when they would meet children at the park and the first question it wasn't even like what's your name it's what year are you in in school oh, okay. um because they would be a bit like i don't understand because they would just see another child and think great another child do you want to play with me you know and it wouldn't matter if that child was three years younger or two years older or um that you know their core group of friends is probably like about a five year age group between the older things maybe six you know and and it was lovely because the older children would kind of mentor the younger ones and it, it just you know very fluid um i realized that milton Keynes has a wonderful home ed group there is a lot you know happening like that so um obviously everybody's circumstances are going to be different but i think it's kind of what you make it um as far as I think when you go along and you meet people, it's, it's very easy to say, would you like to get together? Would you like to do something? And you can very quickly have a lovely social life. Um, but the other thing as well is there's always, um, you know, after school activities, there's lots of different things they can get involved in. And also, so, you know, I have, I have friends whose children go along to, say, um, stargazing clubs and things like that. Okay. And they may, um, you know, they'll be with retired people and you know they'll be spending the evening with them talking to them sharing interests and that is socialization you know there's there are so many different ways of of, of socializing and i think this belief that you're in a class with 30 people of the same age as you i think when else in life are you ever doing that i mean never ever am i put into a class you know into a room of 29 other people exactly my age and if I was what would I actually really get out of that I mean I think part of life is spending time with people of different ages and you know and also when I look back at school there may have been all these people but I probably had two friends who I was with most of the time that were kind of like you know my closest friends I definitely had had other friends in school but I look at my children's friendships and I just think you know um they, you know, it's certainly never been an issue for us ever. In fact, I think it's been the opposite. I think that it, their social intelligence has been really um, benefited from it. No doubt. And having obviously spent a lot of time with your two kids myself working on various projects, one thing that really does stand out is just how willing they are to communicate and how confident they are about interacting with people of, of all ages. To the point where I'm kind of taken back and like, wow, they've got way more confidence than I ever did. <laughs> I remember when we were organising the, the prom for, for your home education community mm -hmm. and how they would just pick up the phone and talk and sort of negotiate on the price. I, I, I'm kind of wary of doing that now at my age, but there they were at um, 11 or 13, whatever they were when we did that. And um, you know, just didn't think twice. So it's so... No. so clear how confident they are in terms of just going out there and and having the confidence just to be themselves and, mm -hmm. and communicate with people regardless of age or status etc etc exactly and it's funny because going on this show you'll know i mean david and I, you know i spend a lot of time together when the children are doing things and they're all working together and afterwards we might have a cup of tea or something and you know usually you usually can't shut me up once you get me on home ed and um david asked the children to come on the show and they both were like yeah cool and and beforehand you know i'm pacing the house and i said to them so you know you're okay with this yeah you know they they were just so excited to to do this and they posted it out there and advertised we're going to be on this david asked me and he knows you know i i just went into oh my goodness you know because <laughs> um 
it was just like you know their confidence far outshines mine which I'm very, that's one of the things I'm so pleased that you know I made the decision to home educate because actually that that is one of the the things that happens but um yeah so I can, can see I what you, you're saying just to give us a little insight into what a, a day is like in your house because um, I'm asking you because it, it made me chuckle when you describe some of the things that, that are going on in your home like They'll just like decide to, today, right, yeah. we're going to create a little short film and then off yeah. they're doing it. Um, they're gone. And I'm like, yeah. Give us I, I can't. What, it, what it's like um, being in a house with two kids who are, well, they, they seem so self-driven. So mm. they initiate their own activities. And literally, it, it, it seems to me that you don't know what they're going to be doing from one day to the next. What, what's that like for you? Um, it's wonderful. I adore it. I love it. They, do, they It's funny because they know if, um, you know, um, I'll, but I, but I must admit, I walk around the corner sometimes. I might, you know, I don't know. I keep talking about things like laundry and washing up. I don't spend all day doing laundry and washing up, but obviously these things have to be done at some point, but I'll come around the corner and I'll be walking into a, a, a shot and then, mom, mom, hang on, too. we've got, oh, and it wants to start again. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry, mom, can, can you just go upstairs for just two minutes and we'll be nearly done? And I realise I've walked into the middle of a feature film, you know, and uh, <laughs> one of them will be sitting there with like a wig on and a, a furry waistcoat and the other one will kind of like, I don't know, have some kind of like rolling pin in their hand and I'm just kind of like, what on earth is going on? And I often wonder what the neighbours must think because, um you know like it'll go out in the front and I must admit we had um we had guys here doing our bathroom lovely guys and um they both commented because they said every day we're never quite sure what's going to happen because like they've got to their van to get something and suddenly there'd be something happening on the front door you know there would be a full-on production or um Mackenzie lately um decided to she wanted to teach the rabbit to jump and then that's turned into the dog to jump so we often have like you know um assault courses set up out the front and again i just think that you know so much is always just happening but i never quite know what's going to be happening in the next minute and and i and people just comment and they're like so so what's going on and i'm like i don't know but um yeah <laughs> My my friend was telling yeah my friend was telling me totally. So go on, your friends tell you. Oh, she was just telling me about like because she's got two boys and um, she said like she'll just be washing up and she'd be there and all of a sudden she bang, and she'd run out. She was telling me this last night. She'd run out. What's going on? And they would have just had done an experiment with something and they'd both be standing there like ooh. And, um, you know, she just be like, oh, okay, everyone okay. But it's just like constantly, it seems like in home ed families, there's just always stuff happening and it's just a really busy, fun, happy environment. And and we'd go over to friends' houses to specifically do something. Like my friend ran a, um, it was called Knit and Knot, and she was going, um, she's very much into doing her own spinning and all that sort of thing. So she wanted to take the children right through the process from a, a fleece right through to, to actually knitting and um, having two boys she thought I'll ask some girls along um, because my boys have no interest in knitting and they can do some knotting and then perhaps some of these girls would like to learn to do you know like, it would be nice for them anyway her star pupil ended up being Cameron he absolutely loved it knitted himself wow. a pair of socks loved it but the funny thing is after the session they'd all end up in the garden and we'd go out there and the next thing they'd been like they'd put together some sort of catapult or something Thing, you know so it would be catapulting across the garden and they'd be trying to figure out how they could make it go a little bit further or you know and and there was just always stuff happening which was really lovely brilliant okay i'm going to move on to a completely different subject um yeah if it's okay can i ask you um in terms of financially how have you coped because a lot of people would say well it's all very well this home education mm -hmm route it's going to work for some families but what for example if i'm a single mother how can i possibly expect to be able to to go down this route even if i wanted to with the best will in the world have you any experience of um meeting home ed single mother single mothers for example um yeah yeah many many um a lot of my friends um single mothers and um I had I, I've got friends, um, single mums who had to 
work and support as well or I had uh, a friends where the the mum would go out and work and the dad would be home doing home education or or family like ourselves where we've ha we've just lived on the one wage and we've done it that way so you you kind of um all sorts all sorts of people of all different kind of um um cultures um, financial backgrounds and you kind of all find your way you know and i think the thing that we've always done one thing we've always done is i've always made sure we do a lot of things that we don't have to pay any money for so although we've got the one wage you know we do a lot of outside we meet a lot of people outside in parks we pack picnics we share resources um we use the library we obviously the internet you know um it's all there there is so many ways to learn it. It's not about expensive curriculums. You don't have to do that. In fact, often, you know, I've, I've gone down a path where I've suddenly had a bit of a, oh, my gosh, I need to do something. Um, and I've, I've purchased, I don't know, a book or something that's cost me £40. And then within a month, I've realised, oh, this isn't that great kind of thing. You know, and um, there, there, is a, there is a, you can do it. Certainly money shouldn't, you know, doesn't have to stop you kind of thing. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Uh, during our little pre-chat before we, we came on air, you mentioned time and travel as two things you wanted to just touch on briefly. Would oh, you yeah, mind yeah. Show it? Time and travel. What, what, did, what did you want to talk about? Okay, about time, time was the fact that you have so much, you have so much of it as far as um, when the children become very, very interested in something, you can spend, you know, I'm um, like Cameron got really into his process, you know, he went through different stages of being very, very interested in like clay animation. And then he, it, it was his cartooning and then clay animation and then um, his painting and then now his um, prosthetics. But he had time to just really soak in it and enjoy it and get up and, you know, be in his pajamas and spend the morning doing something if we weren't doing something and really enjoy it. And, um, um, and not be really tired because he'd had to get up and go somewhere, you know, and I, I really did think that that's really benefited both of them. And what was the other one? Oh, travel. Um, my husband's American, so we took a year out when they were six and eight, six and four, seven, five, um, to live in America just with Drew's family, just so that we could spend some time really kind of... Um, so the children could really get to know America and their, and their family and everything. And, um, yeah. and it was wonderful because we were able to do it. We go over for, when we go over, we tend to go for eight weeks at a time. We'll go for a whole of November, whole of December. Drew can't get that long off from work, but we'll fly before and we'll stay. And then, um, and it's just given us that opportunity to travel and do things like that. We wouldn't have been able to, um, which has been just wonderful. Um, and also you can holiday outside of the school time. So, you know, you can go when it's cheap, you can go camping throughout the summer as many times as you want. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive holidays. Um, it just gives you that option to kind of, um, you know, a friend of, of mine, we were studying geography together and we went and just, I think we decided three days before we went and got a caravan in November down in Dorset and had the most amazing week, but it was so cheap because you know nobody else wanted to be in a caravan in November in Dorset and it was wonderful and there we were you know in, instead of sitting at a desk looking at these kind of like four rock formations we were there on the coast looking at them walking it um it was it was incredible but it it, it having the time kind of opens up all these opportunities and um things like when you suggested oh let's do this video you know this that you wanted to to do the filming with the children and you've yes. been working on that for the last year and a half we were able to say great which day of the week should we put to do this you know we can make our schedule around what interests them and what works for us as a family we're not relying on kind of somebody else's schedule and fitting it in so it gives just so much more freedom to to have all these opportunities amazing what sonia have been the most challenging aspects of this journey for you or perhaps the most challenging aspect i i think probably the hardest thing is other people um because 
you get you do get a lot of um i've been very fortunate my family's been wonderfully supportive you know on both sides of the pond have been incredible um but you do get you know you'll be in you'll 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 have we i don't know we'd have been doing something with friends and on the way home we'll, we'll stop and pick something up at the supermarket and you'll just get oh you you oh you're not in school today or something and they'll sort of say oh no we're home educated and you'll get the Oh, why'd you do that then? And you get a lot of it's that kind of negativity that comes at you, and you think, yeah. oh, um, you know, um, and and it was hard. I think that the hardest bit we went through was the stage where Cam was probably about twelve, and and I do understand this. A lot of his friends who were, who go to school, because of course they have a lot of home educated friends, but then they have friends that go to school that they know through their performing arts and things like that, and. Um, different things we do um and they would go home and say well Cameron and Mackenzie don't have to go to school and I can understand that must be difficult for parents because obviously it's a choice you know which way you choose and um and they would get told things like um Cameron and Mackenzie the next day would be told things like oh um, my mum says that um you won't get you won't have a future because if you don't go to school you won't get any qualifications and you won't learn anything and and they would get this real attack of like um you know you don't you 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 you're not going to succeed and um i think that was very hard because obviously they were very young at the time and they didn't really understand mm. and i think for a while it, it threw cameron into a bit of a wobble or they'd go up to the playground the local park and children would start testing them on math and things like oh you know and i think what well, they're going up there to play and then they'd be throwing sums at them and I, and not that I necessarily you know and it was things that whether we'd covered it or not you know it's not the point it was the point they were constantly being well what do you know um but I I actually the way we sort of talked about it was we talked we we sat down and we wrote all all the different intelligences and 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 different things and we wrote, we wrote down and we talked about all the people in their lives with these intelligences and they started to realize that a lot of their home ed friends were actually the people in their lives that they're like oh yeah she's brilliant at that oh he's brilliant at that and it kind of made i said so the fact you're saying this about your home ed friends do you look at your home ed friends and think your home ed friends aren't aren't educated or aren't um intelligent or aren't sociable or in some way something wrong with them and they're just, of course, no, no, not at all. And that helped them to see that they weren't either, you know. So I think that was probably the hardest thing was what other people said at times. We found that, you know, there were sure. days when that would be quite difficult. Yeah. OK, thank you. Any regrets at all? Do you look back and, ah, oh, we made such a big mistake with this and oh, I wish we'd done it differently? Any regrets at all? No, no, I don't think so. And especially as I've gone, as they've got older as well, because I've realised that everything we did, we got something out of. So there were some things, there were some curriculums we did, some wonderful science curriculums, for instance. We did them all and we finished them because they were so wonderful and we loved doing them. But then there was other things we did where we might have started doing something and it was great for a while and it was wonderful. And I thought, this is going to be brilliant. And I had all these plans of, you know, this is we're going to be doing this for the next year and they're going to know all about the history of Britain by the end of it. And it's so exciting. And then about two months into it, they would start, you could just tell they were an interest and I think no and I'd kind of like you know almost we're gonna do this sort of thing for a few weeks and then I just think what am I doing and there would be that little bit of a feeling of because I was very much like if you start a book you have to finish it it, it took my friend to say it's okay to start a book in the middle and finish at the end it's okay to read a chapter book and close it and and it was just like I went Oh yeah, it, it kind of suddenly hit me that that's okay, and um, we'd got what we had out of that couple of months, and that's all right. And then we moved on to something else, and um, so no, I don't, I don't have any regrets because I think probably everything we tried and and did and experienced added something to the adventure. Well, there you go, folks. Anybody watching concerned about oh, I might make a mistake? There are no mistakes. You can't fail. You just experiment. You try something. If it doesn't work. You adjust accordingly you try something different and you've got Sonia there as a testament to that that being a perfectly valid approach to take I was going to say something in response to what you were just saying and that's I think it's escaped my mind what was it it's gone it will probably come back I'll have a think while you're answering my next question was which was if you had to give a couple bits of advice or guidance right. to parents who are just about to embark on this home education journey, or perhaps 
um, were considering it, what would your you know, top three or four bits of advice be for them? Love, okay, right, well, I definitely, the biggest step, the hardest, not the biggest, the hardest is the first step. It was when I realized that I wanted to home educate and suddenly I realized I had a husband and parents and friends and, and, and family and then friends and then blah, 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 and then a world. And suddenly it was like, that. it just seemed like, oh my goodness, this, how am I going to tell everybody? And it was that first step into deciding to do it that was the biggest thing once I did it the rest has been easier so if you're on that thing it will just be that first step um, the second thing is definitely to listen to your children and to trust them and um, and trust yourself as well and your own knowledge of your children try not to <laughs> uh, don't know if you can hear the phone in the background oh is that the phone I wonder what it was um, yeah, listen to Trust yourself, to your own, you know, and, and try not to worry about what everybody, if anybody else is trying to kind of like put fear on you. Because I think especially in the early days, if you're deregistering your child, you'll probably get told by the school and, and things that you're probably ruining your child's life and everything. And then you get friends and family and all that sort of thing. Well, try, obviously, we really respect the people around us and we know it's because they love us, but try to really follow what you think is right for your children because actually that is probably like when you're their babies you you read all these books you get everybody given advice but you end up finding what you really you know you find your way with them it's exactly the same in home education it doesn't have to be any different to the toddler years um find support of other home educators invaluable because just don't you know when you get those wobbles or you've met that horrible person in town that's just suddenly said certainly made you feel like what am I doing they can kind of real, you know put reality to it of of that it is all going to be okay and the other thing is um my biggest thing is just enjoy I literally used I go to bed every single night and I, and I have the whole home journey and I would just think I get to spend all day tomorrow with my children and I can't tell you just how wonderful that is and I've enjoyed every single step and now we're kind of going out you know cameras at college and Mackenzie's 15 and so we're sort of starting to see you know different things on the horizon um I suddenly look at all those years behind and I just think every single day I got to wake up and just experience this adventure with the ch my children and that would be my biggest thing just enjoy because it is you know it goes so fast and it's so wonderful great stuff thank you I remembered what it was that I was going to ask you while you were talking um, in response to the previous question, it sounded very much like this home education route has helped you to grow and evolve as a person <laughs> just as much as your children. That yes. much came across. Oh my, oh my gosh, yes, definitely. Um, oh, it's been amazing for me. Um, um, definitely um the people i've met the people that you get to kind of like um be with and learn next to and the families that you get to spend time with and just obviously all the knowledge you attain because you're constantly just learning it's wonderful um it's been fantastic i've i've just loved it i very much had the thought that i left school and that was kind of the end of my learning because I thought you learned at school. And when people talked about going back to school, I think they talk about that more perhaps in America, the, the terminology, but it used to just send like dread through me, like, oh my gosh, you know, the sort of going back to learning. Um, but I realized it's just opened my mind. And yes, that might be something I do do one day and go back to more, you know, that, that kind of conventional schooling. But mm -hmm. I just realized, no, you learn all the time in every way and every day and it's just made me realize that I can do anything and I can learn anything and um, yeah it's changed my whole philosophy and the way I look at learning great stuff well we're, we've almost hit the 45 minute mark so I think probably best if we uh, close up there thank you so much Sonia for joining us it's been a really really fascinating conversation did you want to, any closing remarks, anything that we haven't covered that you just wanted to touch on briefly before we say goodbye to our viewers? I think you covered most things. Well, firstly, thank you for looking after me, David. I appreciate it. Um, You're welcome. And the, other, the other thing is, um, I think the proof really is in the pudding. You know, so often, you know, along the way, 
I, you know, you, you'd find that you'd be in these sort of conversations with people where you think, why am I arguing the point here? And then, yeah, I just let it go and I just let Cam and Ken's really be the proof of the fact that this does work, you know. And now I don't even need to have those kind of discussions anymore because all I have to do is go, hey, meet Cam and Ken's and boom, you know, they can see it works. It's, it, it really does. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good option. Sonia Bloomer, thank you so much once again for joining <laughs> us on the show. It's been amazing. And thank you to all of you who have tuned in to watch us live. And of course, if you're watching this after the event, thank you to you too. Please do join me in two weeks' time for the next education show. I haven't actually confirmed who my next guest is, but fingers crossed it's going to be another student. And there is a 12-year-old girl who I'm really keen to get on the show. We're still in the in the midst of negotiations, trying to find a, a suitable week for, her, for us to join, for her to join us. Hopefully, that will be the next show. Thanks once again. See you all soon. Thanks again, Sonia. Take care. Thank you, David. Goodbye, everybody. See you again on Bye -bye. the education show. Bye. Bye-bye.